I'm marine biologist Amani Weber-Schultz. I study sharks. Today, I'll be answering your questions from Twitter. This is Shark Support. At Stop Finning DE asks, what causes sharks to attack humans? This is a really complicated question. One of the biggest reasons is we are putting ourselves into their environment. Now, when it comes to people, right, we can put our hands all over the place to observe our environment. Sharks don't have that. And a lot of times what ends up happening is they might hit their nose on something to try and figure out what it is. They also take what we call exploratory bites. What it appears is that they're actually just trying to figure out what we are. At Canto Azul MC asks, what are shark bones made of? Sharks don't actually have any bones. They are made entirely of cartilage. At Solar Glide asks, how many species of sharks are there? This is a really fun question because we actually just recently passed the 500 species mark, which is insane. So there's many ways to separate a shark from your standard bony fish. One of them is their gill slits. Most sharks have five gill slits, but they can actually have up to seven gill slits. Your standard fish usually only has one. Another thing that separates them is they have a very fatty liver, which would be this orange bit here in this anatomical model. And the liver is huge. And the reason for that is sharks lack a swim bladder. So a bony fish has a swim bladder and that's what helps them maintain their buoyancy. Sharks don't have this, they have a liver and it's super oily and that's what allows them to maintain their buoyancy in the water. Ad Great Thunberg asks, is climate change to blame for a string of shark attacks across America? When you think about climate change, one of the things that we really think about is warming oceans. One of the things that we're finding is sharks and fish in general are actually moving northward where the water stays cooler for longer months. But it's not so great for all the people who are going in the water in New Jersey, in New York, in the beaches. You're getting into their natural habitat and there's a couple of different interactions that are going on. Their prey items seem to be moving more inshore or into shallower waters. We're also in the shallower waters then there might be an increased chance of experiencing a shark bite. But in reality, your chances of being bitten by a shark is about one in 3.7 million. You are more likely to die from a vending machine falling on you, from a coconut falling on your head, or even just a dog in the street. At Vincent W. Yedlin asks, Hammerhead sharks have always fascinated me. Why do they look like this? What is the purpose of having a shovel head and eye position like that? And do they function better than a normal shark? Hammerheads are very fascinating. We all know that they look completely different. And one of the distinctive features of them is this hammer part, which is actually called a cephalofoil. Hammerhead sharks are the most recently diverged species of shark, meaning that they're the most recently evolved. And we actually don't really know why they evolved this hammer, but we can kind of pick apart maybe some reasons why. On the bottom, by their mouth, this whole thing is lined with ampullae of Lorenzini, which allows them to detect electrical currents. So as they're swimming along, and they eat rays, and these rays have a tendency to be kind of buried into the dirt. This is constantly feeling for electrical pulses, so any sort of muscle movement, for example. And they can really pinpoint where that ray might be without actually having to see them because of this ability to see through this electricity. And their eyes are all the way on the outside. Some of our guesses is hammerheads have a much wider range of vision. They can see almost 360 degrees around their body, which really separates them from other species of shark. At I am Jane Cruz asks, what's the most dangerous type of shark? There are three that can, we consider to be dangerous or more aggressive. And those are the great white shark, the tiger shark, and the bull shark. Now the bull shark is very famous because it can actually travel up rivers into fresher water and is the only species of shark can go in between seawater and salt water. So if we're hanging out in a river and there's that shark, one, it's murky, they can't really see anything. So they have a tendency to be a lot more curious and therefore that appears to be a lot more aggressive. At Bill and Durden asks, how do sharks have so many teeth? They don't even drink milk, WTF. So if you think of people, we only have two sets of teeth that come in. We have our baby teeth, we lose them and then we have our adult teeth. If you look at the inside of a shark jaw, they actually have teeth that line the upper and lower jaw. As these teeth fall out, new teeth will replace and become active teeth and form to help them eat. And while that's happening, when space is created, a new tooth will start being formed. So they essentially end up with these layers and layers of layers or conveyor belt, as many people say, of teeth that are perfectly formed and ready to move in. At Ingnong1115 asks, hashtag shark after dark. What's the most unique thing about tiger sharks? What separates them from other sharks aside from their markings? Tiger sharks also are known to eat almost anything. People have found license plates, tires, and even lawn chairs in their stomach. And one of the things that is super odd about them is that they consistently throw their stomach up. Their stomach fully comes out of their mouth to just eject whatever is in their stomach that they can't eat. And this stems from the fact that their normal prey item is turtles and they can't really eat that turtle shell. At the real answery one asks, what does the skin of a shark feel like? Shark skin feels two different ways. So if you move your hand from the head all the way down to the tail, they feel smooth. But if you move your hand from the tail to the head, it's quite rough and there's a lot of resistance. 
And this is because of their scales. So shark scales are called dermal denticles. If this very blown up large version of a scale was placed on this shark, it would sit like this and it would layer and layer and layer. And this lower part here is the base of it. This would actually be embedded below the surface of the shark. So as they're swimming, water is almost perfectly moving over their body, giving them less resistance than what we would experience and actually helping them be as quiet as they are. At Reward, Hana asks, how sharks can detect blood at one part per 25 million parts of water? One of the really big myths about sharks is that they can smell a drop of blood from a mile away. A particle of blood actually has to travel through all of that water and end up in their nose. They can't just say, oh, this is the entire stream it passed. They have to keep having a stream of particles that brings them to you. They can swim around you and have no idea that your blood is in the water. At Haley Jacoby asks, so if sharks have to move to be able to breathe, how do they sleep? I wanna address the first part of this question, which is that sharks don't actually have to always move to breathe. There's kind of two separate breathing mechanisms that sharks employ. The first is called obligate ram ventilating, and that is where a shark absolutely has to move. They just hang with their mouth open, essentially, and the water will just flow out over their gills passively. Think great white sharks, hammerheads, bull sharks. They're constantly swimming because they have to be. But then we have a category known as buccal pumpers. Think nurse sharks sitting on the seafloor or any kind of shark that's just hanging out around the bottom. They actually have special cheek muscles that allow them to suck water in and flush it out over their gills. So they do not have to be moving to breathe. When it comes to sleep, the sharks that we know the most about their resting time is buccal pumpers. Some sharks will be observed in this resting period with their eyes open, which is really fascinating. So this whole sleep in sharks is something that we're still researching very heavily. At Miss Kayla Joy asks, how do you track a shark? You actually have to catch them first. Once we've caught the shark, we can then do a workup on it and add a tag into it. And there's a couple of different ways we'll tag sharks. The first one is just a satellite tag. This is probably what most people would expect of a tag. It's a decently sized package that goes right onto the back of that top dorsal fin, and it actually pings up to satellites. The next is an acoustic tag. Now this is typically implanted into the body of the shark. Another one is a great way for normal people and non-scientists to really get into shark research. And that is just a standard ID tag. This essentially goes into the dorsal fin of the shark. You have a little device that lets you do this. You stick it into the dorsal fin. So on this tag, there's a couple of different pieces of information. The first is just a standard ID number. We would read this number off and then we could go into our Excel sheet and say, oh, we caught the shark two weeks ago and it was in this place. There's a lot of different reasons that we tag sharks, but the overarching question is what are they doing and where are they going? Mostly because we just wanna know in what areas of the world they're living in, what are they eating, where are their nurseries? So there's all these overarching layers of why tracking is important. At Rogue Sharks asks, what are baby sharks called? They're called pups and it's amazing. At Lousy Scouty asks, Siri, do sharks lay eggs? This is a really interesting question. Sharks actually have three ways of reproducing. The first is they'll just lay eggs. You can swim around the seafloor and you'll see things like a mermaid purse, which is basically just an egg case that sits on the seafloor and develops the shark. And when they're ready, they kind of punch out of that egg and they're ready to go. They get the term purse because they actually kind of look like a purse depending on the egg that you're looking at. The second is they have eggs inside the mom. And in each egg, there is one shark and that shark is slowly developing over time with a yolk sac attached to it. And once they hatch inside the mom from their egg, the mom will then give birth to the live pups, which is really fascinating. And the last one is just live birth. So similar to how we do, they just give birth to live pups. And a really interesting example of this is sand tiger sharks. Sand tiger sharks will have a whole bunch of eggs inside their body. Some shark eggs will become fertilized. And as they begin to grow, they actually start eating their siblings while they're in the womb. So there's kind of this crazy Hunger Games thing going on inside. And instead of giving birth to a whole bunch of different pups all at once and hoping that they'll be able to live, they actually give birth to just two pups that are already very strong and already know how to behave like a shark. At Dive Magazine asks, why do sharks glow in the dark? Some sharks have this really cool ability to bioluminesce, which is producing light from organs within their body. One in the case of the cookie cutter shark is to actually attract larger prey items that may want to eat them so they can whip around and take that nice cookie cutter bite out of them. Another is counter shading. Sharks that can bioluminesce in specific ways produce some light to blend in with any light that a predator below them might see above. They're able to avoid being eaten because they have this bioluminescent ability. At Blakeney CFA asks, Shark Week Trivia, what is the fastest shark? The fastest shark is the short fin mako and it can swim up to 45 miles per hour, which is very different from most of the other species that we know of. At Herd Olympics asks, what are sharks afraid of? Those motherfuckers ain't God. Whether or not sharks actually experience the emotion of fear or being afraid of something is hard to say. When you're in the water with sharks, a lot of them have a tendency to be skittish. Some of them are really curious. You can think sharks that people dive with, 
nurse sharks, oceanic white tips, but many sharks actually just avoid people altogether because we're not a natural item in their habitat and they're generally pretty cautious. So if they're not really gonna come up to you and be curious about you, they'd rather just steer clear of something that they're not sure what it is. At Kalilo asks, for how long do Greenland sharks live? Greenland sharks inhabit very cold water and they have a very slow metabolism. Based on our research, we estimate that they live 250 to 500 years old. At Team Finfree tweets, question, what's your favorite shark? Go. Hashtag Finfree. My favorite shark is the bonnethead. This is the smallest species in the hammerhead family. So it is actually related to the great hammerhead. And they also have this really insane ability. Dr. Samantha Lee discovered that this is actually the only species of shark that is omnivorous, meaning that they can actually digest grass, which is not a thing that we'd expect from sharks. We generally think of them as being carnivorous only. At Hunter Jordan asks, does the Megalodon really exist? It did exist. It's extinct now. Megalodon was a really big shark and they also had these really big teeth. So this is a replica. A lot of people have actual megalodon teeth that they find when they go diving and actually lets us figure out what the size of the animal might have been. They lived in kind of the warmer ocean regions and our oceans have a tendency to be pretty cold now. When you consider all this together, there's really not any territory in the ocean that the megalodon could thrive in. There's no nursery grounds that we know of and their prey items kind of just disappeared and changed to make it harder for them to actually be able to eat. At Darker Desai asks, how to take care of sharks Google search. In captivity, usually what aquarists will do is make sure that that temperature of the water is the optimal temperature for them to live in, and they'll make sure that they're feeding them as often as they need to. Sharks don't necessarily make good pets, and they're also not always great in aquarium. So there's not a whole lot of great whites in aquariums, for example, but you do th see things like sand tiger sharks, whale sharks, nurse sharks, which are sharks that are a lot easier to take care of and aren't as finicky in the environment that they need to be in. At Nat Geo asks, how long have sharks been swimming in the ocean? Sharks have been around for around 450 million years. At Matt NJ81 asks, what is the most endangered shark species? Now it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what species is the most endangered. If you find a shark that is critically endangered, that means that we are really unsure of either if they might exist, or we've only seen a couple of them. A really good example of this is the Ganges shark, which was actually a river shark that we haven't seen in a really long time. At MJGX asks, Jaws wasn't a real shark, was it? Just based on a real story or something? So Jaws was not based off of a true story. So the shark you see in the film is a robotic shark and his name was Bruce. But while they're hunting around for Bruce and Bruce is supposedly eating all these people, they do pull up a shark that they put up on a crane. And this is a tiger shark. You know that this shark is in fact real because it has its claspers attached. Claspers are the male sexual organ on sharks that are just hanging off the back of the shark in all their glory. So next time you watch Jaws, be on a lookout for that. At Jeff Ullerton asks, did sharks go through a mass extinction 19 million years ago? We think that at some point, something changed that resulted in a mass extinction of all of these sharks. And the way that we know that is because in our fossil record, there's a sudden drop in the amount of shark denticles or teeth from before the 19 million years to after. And that lets us know that there was this big extinction. We're not entirely sure what it was, but it seems like the populations really dropped. At Stack Deck 3 asks, why do sharks migrate to different places? This is a really good question, and we're really still trying to figure out a whole answer to it. Some sharks have specific places that they go to mate. There are specific areas called nurseries where young sharks will live until they're big enough to kind of venture out into the open ocean. Another reason is to follow prey. We as people will fly to other places all around the world just because we're curious about traveling. Sharks kind of have a tendency to also travel, and we don't really know why for some reasons, but we do for others. At Abi Rupon asks, how do sharks see, smell, and hear? So sharks have eyes just like us, so they do actually use their vision to observe their environment. They do not have 20-20 vision, neither do I, as you can see. To aid with that, they have all of their other senses like hearing and smell and the ability to sense pressure changes and the ability to de detect electricity to create this whole overarching picture of what their environment looks like in a 360 view. You'll see all these spots all over the bottom of their head and sometimes even on the top. And this is an organ that essentially can detect different electrical pulses. So sharks have a lot of different senses that allow them to sample their environment at a way higher level than we are able to. At MCM Sharks XX asks, how are hashtag sharks important and why do they matter in regards to our ocean? We think of sharks as being apex predators. So they're at the top of that food chain. And in an ecosystem, there's constant control going up and down. If you think of grass growing and a fish coming and maybe eating that grass, and then there's a carnivore that eats that fish, and then there's a bigger carnivore that eats that fish. Let's say we remove the fish that eats the grass, and the predator that was eating that fish might not have any prey to keep eating. 
And if that fish is gone, then sharks don't have anything to eat. When sharks are removed from an ecosystem, there's kind of all this, these crazy environmental changes that can happen, and some of that ends up being less control on things that are below them. At Zixt asks, sharks have eyelids? Do sharks blink? Sharks don't blink in the sense that we do. They do have something called a nictitating membrane, which is an eyelid that will fold over some shark's eyes when a predator gets close, and it's just a protection mechanism. At EOS Green Bay asks, hashtag Tuesday trivia. What is the largest species of shark currently living in the ocean? The largest species of shark actually is the whale shark, which can get up to 18 meters. People often will say that it gets up to the length of a school bus, which is massive. They actually eat plankton, so they don't eat meat in the same way that we expect other sharks to, which is really fascinating. So those are all the questions for today. I really loved answering them, and I hope that you learned something new. Thanks for watching Shark Support.